Coffee Break German, Season 3, Episode 12. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu Coffee Break German. Ich bin Marc. Und ich bin Andrea. Wie geht's dir heute, Andrea? Mir geht es tipptopp. Und dir, Marc? Ah, mir geht's auch sehr gut heute. So what are we going to be talking about today? Are we continuing on looking at the genitive? Yes, we are. And we're going to look at our last puzzle piece in the use of the genitive. And it will be adjective endings in the genitive. Adjective endings in the genitive. You know, last time when we were uh, going through our translations in our bonus episodes, I was looking at some adjectives in some of those and I think I was kind of just guessing the ending. So probably this will help me feel a little more confident about it. Yes. So actually, I didn't want to say anything because you were doing very well with your guesswork. Okay. And it's maybe something that listeners should also remember that maybe a little bit of Sprachgefühl mm -hmm. And a little bit of what you've already heard before will take you already a long way, uh, even on the off chance that you might make a mistake. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to this episode. We are going to be sorting out our adjective endings and particularly looking at the genitive. Bist du bereit, Andrea? Ich bin bereit. Los geht's. So I thought we could start with... Um, reviewing some adjectival endings that we already know very well, uh, the ones in nominative, accusative and dative. What do you think, Mark? Sounds good. Okay, let's, let's hopefully I'll remember these. So we're going to look at the nominative and uh, we're looking at a beautiful tree. So the beautiful tree. How would you say this in, in German? Um, der schöne Baum. Yeah, das ist richtig. And if it's the beautiful flower? Then it would be die Blume, uh, die schöne Blume. Das ist richtig. And let's look at one of my favorite flowers, which is das Edelweiß. And so handy that it's a neuter example too. Yes. <laughs> so again, it's the same, das schöne Edelweiß. Sehr, sehr schön. So we see here, der, die, das in uh, the nominative when we use a definite article, is schöne, yeah? And then we have uh, the plural, which changes slightly, and we look at the beautiful roses. Um, that would be die schönen Rosen. Das ist richtig. Sehr gut, super. So let's go to the accusative with uh, der, die, das. And keep in mind what happens with the article in with the masculine singular article in the accusative. Mm -hmm. So der becomes... Den. Exactly. And uh, uh, so the, the beautiful tree becomes in the accusative. So we need to make the same change to the uh, adjective and that would become then den schönen Baum. Genau. For example, ich sehe den schönen Baum. Yeah. Yeah, I see the beautiful tree. And then what happens to die schöne Blume? Nothing. It just is the same. Die schöne Blume. Very good. Yeah, excellent. And das schöne Edelweiß? Again, stays the same. Super. And die schönen Rosen? Oh, wonderfully, stays the same. Wonderful. Thank you. Sehr gut. Super. So let's look at the dative, which you think, oh, surely there it's more complicated. But it isn't. Yeah? So, for example... um. We have, again, der schöne Baum. So we look at der becomes... Dem. Yeah. And do you remember how we turn the adjective into a dative adjective? Um, I think the adjective in each case this time ends in N. Ja, das ist richtig. So dem schönen Baum. So for example, ich gebe dem schönen Baum Wasser. So I give water to the beautiful tree. Genau, das ist richtig. And now I give water to the beautiful flower. And just a reminder, it's easier than you think. Yeah, because this stays the same. It is schönen, again, for the adjective. But of course, we need to change the article from die to der. So ich 
gebe der schönen Blüm, Blume Wasser. Sehr gut, super. And what happens to the Edelweiss? Um, then again, we need to change the article itself and it would become Ich gebe dem schönen Edelweiss Wasser. Genau, richtig. And the roses? Once again, just our article changes from D to den. So, ich gebe den schönen Rosen Wasser. Sehr gut, super. Let's quickly go to the same examples, but we're using ein instead of der, die, das. We use the indefinite article. So, we have ein, a beautiful tree. So, this is when we sort of use the definite article endings as the endings of our adjectives, kind of thing. Das ist richtig, sehr gut. I'm so glad someone has been paying attention. <laughs> so it would be um, ein schöner Baum, eine schöne Blume and ein schönes Edelweiss. Sehr gut, bravo. And when we have several beautiful roses? They would just be schöne Rosen. Genau, das ist richtig. So let's move on to the accusative. And ich, ich sehe a beautiful tree. Uh, ich sehe einen schönen Baum. Sehr gut, super. And then it's quite simple again when we see a beautiful flower. Uh, so ich sehe eine schöne Blume. Genau, it remains the same as in the um, nominative. And the Edelweiss? Um, uh, again, it remains the same. Ein schönes Edelweiss. Ich sehe ein schönes Edelweiss. Sehr gut. And the beautiful roses? Um, ich sehe schöne Rosen. Genau, sehr gut. And now let's look at the dative and we give water to a beautiful tree. So again, we need to change the indefinite article to the correct form. But as far as the adjective is concerned, I think what we need to do is keep them the same as the definite forms for the dative adjectives. Das ist richtig. So it's des Schönen. Yeah. Yeah. And our article is? Uh, einem schönen Baum. So ich gebe einem schönen Baum Wasser. Sehr gut. And what happens to the flower? Ich gebe einer schönen Blume Wasser. Super. And the Edelweiss? Ich gebe einem schönen Edelweiss Wasser. And the roses? They will stay as schönen Rosen. Ja, ich gebe schönen Rosen Wasser. Sehr gut. Super. Well done, Mark. I'm so impressed. Well done. I've got a good teacher. What can I um, say? Ah. Let's look at the genitive adjectival endings now. And we're going back to our examples of the beautiful tree and the flowers, etc. So let's look at der schöne Baum. What happens to der in the genitive? So in the genitive, it becomes des. Genau. So des, and then our adjectival ending is en. So des schönen Baums. For example, die Blätter, die Blätter, the leaves, mm -hmm. die Blätter des schönen Baums. So the schönen is the same as in the dative. Ja, richtig, ja. Okay. Um, but then we just need to remember to change the article to des and also, as you said, the baums uh, with, uh, I believe, our, our masculine and our neuter, we stick the, the s ending on. That is correct, yes. Okay. So, sehr gut. Let's look at the beautiful flower now. What happens to the article d? In the genitive. In the genitive, that becomes der. Ja, das ist richtig. So, die Blätter der, and then we have the same adjectival endings as in the masculine. Schönen. Ja, die Blätter der schönen Blume. Sehr gut, super. Die Blätter der schönen Blume. Does the same happen with the neuter? That is correct. So, our beautiful Edelweiss, das schöne Edelweiss, becomes? Des... Schönen Edelweißes? Weißes? Ja. Edelweißes, ja. Ja, genau. Die Blätter des schönen Edelweißes. Sehr gut, super. And so do we keep the SZ at the end of Edelweiss and then just add ES? 
Ja, das ist richtig. Okay. Ja. Sehr gut, super. And then äh, die schönen Rosen, they also have beautiful leaves, so die Blätter. Then it would be der an schönen Rosen again. Das ist richtig. Sehr gut, bravo. Okay, so we have the same adjectival endings for der, die, das and plural. Okay, what about the indefinite article ones? Do they stay the same? Almost all of them. That was too good to be true. <laughs> It's, it's not bad, though. So we have ein schöner Baum. Yeah. And we have die Blätter. Eines schönen Baums. Sehr gut, bravo. Und äh, eine schöne Blume, die Blätter. And I'm guessing einer schönen Blume. Super. Und ein schönes Edelweiß, die Blätter. Eines schönen Edelweißes. Sehr gut, super. And now the last one has a slight change, okay. but I'm sure you can remember it. And it is die Blätter schöner Rosen. Right. So it just becomes the schöner for the adjective ending becomes er rather than en. Schöner. Genau. Okay. So there is a change from the dative uh, in that case. Ja, genau. Das ist richtig. Okay. That is a lot of information we've gone through there and perhaps not the most fascinating <laughs> start to a podcast episode ever. However, it is... I find it wonderful. <laughs> it is very useful information. But of course, the, the key thing about all of this is seeing it in context. And that's what we're going to do after the break. In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break German Season 3, we're also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your German. That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode where Andrea will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the topic of each lesson. And of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakgerman.com and follow the links for season three there. Okay, welcome back. We are looking at the adjectival endings for the genitive today, and we're just about to see lots of examples of this in a conversation. Andrea, can you tell us about this conversation? Yes, we are in a high-end fashion shop, and I would urge listeners to take this whole conversation with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Uh, it's not it's not very serious. So we we pretend to be in a super chic boutique where also uh, famous people go shopping, etc. Okay, sounds interesting. Let's have a listen. Schau mal, Katharina, wie findest du diese Jacke? Na ja, geht so. Ich fand die Länge der anderen Jacke besser. Die da ist zu lang. Kann ich Ihnen behilflich sein? Oh, guten Tag. Ja, gern. Ich habe im Internet das Foto vieler bekannter Schauspielerinnen mit so einer grünen Segeltuchjacke gesehen. Ach ja, diese Jacken sind der Trend des diesjährigen Frühlings. Ganz toll sehen die aus. Ich bringe Ihnen ein paar Modelle. Vielen Dank. Also, ich habe hier das kurze Modell in den Farben Früchte des italienischen Sommers und Tiefe der griechischen See. Die sind jetzt angesagt. Und hier habe ich drei Exemplare der längeren Version in den Farben Nein, danke, die gefallen mir nicht so. Wegen meiner kurzen Beine sieht das gleich wie ein Mantel aus. Verstehe. Na dann, diese zwei. Aufgrund des großen Ansturms auf die Jacken haben wir leider nur noch diese zwei Farben. Also, mir gefällt ja diese hier in Pflaumen der spanischen Früchteschale. Oder wie die Farbe heißt. Früchte des... Ja, mir im Prinzip auch. Aber der Kontrast des Reißverschlusses zur Jacke ist ein bisschen zu viel des Guten. Also das tragen jetzt alle. Die Creme de la Creme des deutschen Films sowie die Schickeria des Sylter Strandlebens. Ach so, warst du dir dieser aufregenden Tatsache bewusst, Tanja? Nein, aber angesichts der überzeugenden Argumente von Frau... Schiffer ist mein Name. Ja, von Frau Schiffer werde ich die Jacke kaufen. 
Darf ich Ihnen noch ein paar Socken der neuesten Kollektion des französischen Designers Jacques Chaussette zeigen? Die Farben seiner außergewöhnlichen Muster sind betörend. Äh, nein, danke. Trotz meines unbändigen Interesses muss ich leider passen. Ich habe schon zu viel Zeit des heutigen Tages mit Modekäufen verbracht. Okay, so Andrea, an interesting conversation there. Um, it sounds like the, the kind of place I'm in all the time. Yes, I only shop in boutiques <laughs> where clothes have, where colors have these names. Yes. <laughs> okay, shall we go through the conversation, talk a little bit about what happened? Yeah, genau. So here we are in a very fancy clothes boutique with Tanya and Katharina. Uh, because Tanya is looking for a jacket made of canvas that she has seen actresses wear. Mm -hmm. And the shopping assistant knows immediately what jacket she's talking about and says it is the trend of the spring this year. Yep. And there are particular colors that are mentioned. Yes. So first there are two models, a short type of jacket and a long type of jacket. And the short type of jacket comes in the colors Fruits of the Italian Summer. So Früchte des italienischen Sommers. Yep. Yeah. And then, then there's one about the Greek Sea as well. Indeed. So that is Tiefe der griechischen See, so Depth of the Greek Sea. Okay. Yeah. And then the shop assistant starts uh, saying that she has also jackets in the longer version, but Tanya is not interested because of her short legs, as she said. These longer jackets instantly look like a coat on her. <laughs> okay. So what about the, the short ones? The, the shop assistant says that uh, she's only got two of them because they've been very popular. Indeed. And Katharina expresses her preference for the color fruits of the Italian summer, but she doesn't really remember the name for this color anymore. So, so she says, plums of the Spanish fruit bowl, <laughs> flaumen der spanischen uh, Früchteschale. I don't think that's one of the, the colors chosen by this particular fashion brand. No, no, I don't think that is exclusive enough, to be <laughs> honest. Uh, but Tanya also likes uh, this color, but she's worried that the const contrast of the zip of the jacket to the color fruits of the Italian summer is a bit too much. Okay, very, very detailed there. Yes, and do you remember how the shop assistant reacts to this worry? Well, she assures her that they are, uh, that, that, that it's all the rage just now because all the important people are wearing it right now. Exactly. So the people of the film industry as well of the Schickeria The Sulta Schickeria des Strandlebens. Do you know what the Schickeria is? That is definitely new to me, but I've got this image of kind of influencers in the, the Silt Island, that kind of idea. That's correct. So the Schickeria, this word comes from a song. I think it was, I was a child when it was in the chart. And it sings about this type of people. And uh, uh, it goes like this, Schick, Schick, Korea. And they sing about uh, these very uh, chic people that have the latest clothes, etc. And they're trendsetters. And uh, this band calls them Schick, Korea. Right. Okay. So these are the trendsetters uh, in the, the island of Silt in the, the Ostsee. Ja, genau. In der Ostsee. Super. So uh, Katharina um, makes a bit of a joke. She's not very nice to the shop assistant, I have to say. And she asks jokingly if Tanya knew about this exciting fact. And uh, Tanya jokingly adds that in light of these facts, uh, it would be the right thing to buy this jacket. Okay. And then uh, before they leave, the shop assistant wonders if they, if she can interest them in some socks from the new collection of French designer Jacques Chaussure. <laughs> Please don't go, don't go and look for a clothes by uh, Jacques, Jacques Chaussure. You won't find any. Yeah. Uh, but uh, his designs feature extraordinary patterns. 
But I think by the time it gets to to this point, Tanya has probably spent both enough money and time, um, and so she 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 has to decline. Yes, exactly. Although she's very interested. Of course. Okay, well, we'll be going through this conversation in greater detail and that will be in our bonus episode. Uh, but for now, that's almost it for this episode. Yes, I think uh, we have something more and zwar eine Kleinigkeit. So today's Kleinigkeit is a proverb and it is Kleider machen Leute. Okay, this this sounds familiar. And I think one of the interesting things about it is that it's so proverbial in English. We actually use older English in the, the English version, don't we? Yes. Do you want to tell me what it is? Because I don't know I it. I think it would be clothes, clothes maketh the man. Yes, indeed. Oh, I didn't know that. Great. Yeah, genau. Kleider machen Leute. Uh, it's exactly this. So in what context would we use this? For example, it's something I heard when I was younger and I would go and apply for a job and then my parents or grandparents would say, oh, Andrea, put on nice clothes, you know, good suit and, uh, you know, look proper because Kleider machen Leute. Yeah. So the clothes that you're wearing give the they say a lot about you, basically. That's exactly it. Yes. Kleider machen Leute. I was just checking there, and this the origin is in Hamlet in Shakespeare's Hamlet, where Polonius tells his son Laertes to dress well when he's heading off, uh, because apparel oft proclaims the man, and that's what then grew into clothes maketh the man. Very good. That's very interesting. So there you have it. Well, that's where we're going to leave this episode of Coffee Break German. We hope you've enjoyed it, learned some new things, whether that be all about the adjectival endings, whether it's the expression Kleider machen Leute, or indeed whether it's the the extraordinary patterns of the socks of Jacques Chaussure. <laughs> we, will, we, we have definitely covered lots. We'll be back again soon with more Coffee Break German. In the meantime, don't forget to check out our full version of this course. If you're already using that, you can go on and listen to the bonus episode and the translations already and you can use the video version and the lesson notes to help you make the most of this uh, series. However, if you're not using that yet, you can find it all at Coffee Break Academy. Bis bald! Bis zum nächsten Mal! Tschüss! You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>